Do you believe that the guns of war in Ukraine is a geopolitical dispute only? Or is there also a monumental divine message here? Hello again, everyone, and welcome to my next video. Most of you already know that I'm always telling you on this channel about the rampant rabbinic corruption in modern day rabbinic courts, and especially in the state of Israel. What I have for you today are two smoking guns which corroborate everything I've ever told you about this subject. For the first one, I will play for you an audio clip of a supposed rabbi of the Israeli rabbinate by the name of Binyamin Lassri, who comes from the city of Petach Tikva. In the clip, this Lassri can be heard clearly telling someone that the rabbinic decisions of the Israeli rabbinate relating to divorce have absolutely nothing to do with Torah and Alacha. Yes, you heard that right. According to Lassri, the Rabbanut's decisions are based totally on secular court policies. Give a listen now to this extraordinary piece of evidence. <laughs> שאין כוח להעמיד את הדת על תילה, אין כוח, וזה הזמן, אין, אין דת על תילה, ובית הדין לא יכול לעשות את הכל לפי דין תורה, אתה מבין? על פי דין תורה, אז אני מסביר לך, בית הדין היום אין לו שום עצמאות, מבחינת דין תורה, אין לו עצמאות, תסביר לך, אם אתה מחפש דין תורה כשמו <אז> ומה שהוא יחליט בקווים ומרכז שתבטל את זה, בית הדין היה מחליט ככה. And now I will translate the gist of his comments for you in English. I am explaining to you today that in the modern times we are living in the state of Israel. And there were times like this when the Jewish people were in the diaspora that we have no strength to restore the religion. There is no strength at this time. There is no religious restoration. The Bezdin cannot do everything according to Torah law. Do you understand? According to Torah law, so I am explaining to you that today it has no independence in decision-making at all. From the standpoint of Torah law, it has no independence. We just don't go to war with the Supreme Court of Israel. You have to understand that the Bezdin, due to secular law, Due to the Supreme Court at the entrance to Jerusalem, it is not the Bezin that you think it is. It is what it is. I am simply trying to explain to you, so I will explain to you what has changed. If the Bezin would have understood that it has independent decision-making abilities and what it decides is solid and there's nobody that could cancel it, then the Bezin would rule that way. So it comes out based on what Lassie here is saying is that all of the Gittin procured by him and his associates in Israel are invalid because they haven't been applying authentic halachic principles. They have been basing their decisions on what the Israeli secular courts have been asking them to do. So instead of demonstrating that they possess a backbone and will stand up to the secularists on principle, the Lassies of the Rabbanut stand on their hind legs wagging their tongues while doing whatever their masters in the Knesset tell them to do. <clears throat> and now, here comes smoking gun number two. I have linked for you below a letter issued by the Federation Besden of London, which I will now read to you as I analyze their distortions and outright heresy in matters of divorce. Regrettably, the government's commitment, I'm sorry, the Besden is writing to you to alert you to a significant recent legal development that has wide-ranging ramifications for the Kashris of Gittin issued in the UK. 
a new law passed by Parliament, and now on the status books, the Domestic Abuse Act 2021 provides that controlling and coercive behavior between two people who are personally connected can be regarded as a criminal offense if prosecuted and found guilty of this offense. A person can be fined heavily and even imprisoned. In fact, Section 76 of the Serious Crimes Act 2015 already provided for a criminal offense in the event of a controlling or coercive behavior in an intimate or family relationship. However, that act limits an intimate or family relationship to situations where the two persons are either currently in an intimate relationship or are living together. The new act expressly states that the offense is committed even if the two persons are not currently in an intimate relationship or are living together, as long as they were once married or in a similar relationship. As the Domestic Abuse Act 2021 passed through Parliament, an amendment was proposed in the House of Lords that would allow the Act to state explicitly that the unreasonable withholding of a Jewish religious divorce, in essence, I get, the question is who decides what is unreasonable. If a man wants um, reconciliation, is that considered unreasonable? The unreasonable withholding of a Jewish religious divorce, in essence, a get, would be considered controlling and coercive behavior between two persons who are personally connected and thus a criminal offense under this act. Whilst the government declined to include this explicitly in the act itself, it did promise that in the forthcoming statutory guidance to the act, it will state expressly, expressly that someone who unreasonably withholds the giving or receiving of a get can be prosecuted under this act. Again, who decides what's unreasonable? Maybe a person says, I want to give a get, but I want to have equal ac access to my children. I want fair distribution of marital assets. Is that called unreasonable? I will leave that up to you. The intention of Parliament is to provide assistance for Jewish individuals who find themselves in a situation in which their marriage is in effect over and yet they cannot move on with their lives because their spouse is refusing to cooperate in the granting of a get. The Divorce Religious Marriages Act 2002 which was enacted specifically to aid Agunot, was crafted by Parliament in close cooperation with leading halachic authorities coordinated by Diane Beryl Berkowitz. Did you all hear that? The religious authorities of the UK have asked the Parliament to enact a law specifically for Agunus. Keep that in mind because as I read on, you will see what's going on here, which ensured that the law would not compromise the halacha in any way. Regrettably, the government's commitment to include get refusal in the statutory guidance of the new act was apparently given without meaningful consultation with halachic authorities or due consideration of halachic principles. Does that make sense to you? You have a bunch of rabbis going to the legislatures trying to enact a new law to punish a man who doesn't give a get, and then they're saying it doesn't follow halacha principles. Sounds to me like um, they're trying to um, correct their mistakes that they've done, as we will see shortly. As a result, <clears throat> ironically, a law that was intended to assist Agunas has in fact created the potential for an Aguna to find herself in a situation in which it will be almost impossible for her to receive her get. The reason for this is, now this is important, pay close attention, you will hear an admission from the Bezden, and many Bezdens will do the same trick. Watch the trick. They will admit to you a true halacha, but they learn how to skirt around the halacha so you don't understand what's going on. And you don't see the real the reality of things. The reason for this is that, as you know, in halacha, a get must be given by the husband and received by the wife entirely of their own free will. 
and without any compulsion. A get given under duress, whether due to physical threats, like Mendel Epstein has done, financial threats or threats of imprisonment like the Israeli rabbinate does on a daily basis, is absolutely invalid as a matter of halacha, and the couple would remain married to one another, notwithstanding the granting of a get. This is clearly exactly what I've been telling you, my viewers, all along. Here you have an admission from a Bezdin of the halacha. So you see clearly I have not been making this stuff up. But now you'll see their trick. The result of this is that were, for example, a woman to initiate a criminal prosecution against her estranged husband for coercive and controlling behavior due to his refusal to grant her a get, she will have tied the Besnan's hands because even were the husband to now approach the Besnan and offer to give the get, the Besnan would not be able to arrange the get. Well, duh, you guys created the law. It's like putting cheese in front of a mouse. Do you expect the mouse not to eat the cheese? You've enticed these women to go directly to the court because the law is there to protect them. Clearly, the husband in such a situation would be acting under duress, under the threat of financial penalty and a possible custodial sentence. And the Bezin is plainly not able to arrange a get that has no validity whatsoever in Allah. It sounds like after these rabbis made this uh, bill, helped craft this bill, they got a lot of flack from other Orthodox rabbis and said, how do you guys do this? This is a blatant violation of halacha. It's kind of similar to the RCA's prenup. They construct a prenup just to punish the man. And that's why many people in the Haredi community will not sign that prenup. And I continue. There are, of course, situations, and watch their trick here, in which the Allah mandates that a husband must give a get or that a wife must accept a get. And if that is the case, then he or she can be compelled to give or receive the get. Do you see how they say there are situations? The word situation sounds like a rarity, which is true. Only in very, 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 very remote, rare cases can coercion be done. They admit that, right? The problem is, you'll see in a minute, that they will actually do it all the time. However, whether this is the halachic ruling in any particular situation cannot be determined without a bezdin hearing both parties in a din Torah. Both parties. Well, what happens if the husband says, I don't want to come, I don't want to, come to the Federation bezdin in London. I want to go to a bezdin in New York. According to halacha, as a respondent and nitva, he has that right. So if he has that right, this Bezin is not hearing both parties because he's refusing to come to them. So how are they going to do this? The answer is they're going to do it anyway and violate their own halacha that they state right here. And how do I know that? It happened to me. It's happened to many people. When you choose another Bezin, they say you can't, you can't go to another Bezin. As communal rabbis, the Besnan wishes to inform you to advise any of your constituents to whom it is relevant that if one initiates a criminal prosecution in the secular courts without first getting written authorization from a Besnan in order to compel a spouse to agree to a get, the Besnan will be unable to arrange the get based on halachic principles. Sure, sell me another bill of goods. You're telling me that no one in the UK, no Bezin will give her a get because she went to the court? But ironically, what's funny is the women are going to court every day against the Torah and they have no problem helping her out. So just because there is a bill in the parliament that punishes a man, all of a sudden they won't do it? Yeah, you can sell me the Brooklyn Bridge too. The Bezin wishes to reassure you that it will continue as always to do all it can to assist those who find themselves in tragic situations of having a recalcitrant spouse refusing to cooperate with the granting of a get and will use all halakhically legitimate means. And what are those halakhically legitimate means? Jailing someone? That's not a halakhically legitimate means. To ensure 
that such situations will be resolved swiftly and satisfactorily. End of quote. Did you pay attention to this crafty letter that the London Besnan wrote? They essentially reached out to the legislatures to construct a bill that will impose the harshest sanctions against a man who refuses to give a get, while at the same time, they realize that, oops, we messed up, since the woman can just ignore the best and go directly to the court to seek relief for her get. So they catch themselves here and say, no, 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 we will not write you a get unless you come to us first so we can kosher this imprisonment of your husband. You see, if the woman avoids going to the bezin, they lose all of the revenue associated with the divorce procedure, and that just cannot be tolerated. How will bezin stay in, in business? So now, do you really think that we can trust these rabbis to rule on coercion when they themselves promote this Domestic Abuse Act in Parliament? It's like a man who, who owns a, uh, a butcher, who owns a meat store, but refuses to have a uh, rabbinic supervisor making sure that all the meats are kosher. But he tells you, oh, it's kosher. You see, I wear a yarmulke. I go to shul every Shabbos. Could you really trust him if he's there to sell meat? Do you really believe that they would ever rule that you cannot coerce a man to give a get? Of course not, my friends. They're lying. For those of you that have not yet watched my video on Mendel Epstein, the Prot Father, I will link it for you at the end of this video. It's worthwhile for you to see this video. This is the man who led a rabbinic kidnapping Bezin and was caught red-handed with his pants down. His own smoking gun was when he told the FBI that he performs kidnappings and uses a cattle prod to force men in troubled marriages to give a get. It's just that the husband that Epstein was pursuing, as well as the wife on whose behalf he was pursuing the husband, both didn't exist. That whole scandal only illustrates to all that Epstein wasn't interested in halacha at all, but only in the $70,000 that he was contracted for in order to carry out the hit. The sting operation that the FBI conducted revealed Epstein's shoddy work as a rabbi in that he was only someone who follows the money and nothing else. So there you have it. Two smoking guns which reveal to us a totally fraudulent rabbinic system that has corrupted our divorce process. Where do these rabbis appear to us looking like this? Or like this? Or even like this? It is all meaningless because they are nothing but wolves in sheep's clothing, heretics who have nothing to do with Torah. Were you impressed with those nice flowing beards and rounded black hats? Right? It is no different than if you or I would dress up as an airline pilot on Purim. They might be wearing respectable enough garb on the outside, but on the inside it is nothing but pure garbage. Countless women have been fooled by these rabbis receiving invalid gittin, which causes them to sin with Eshet Ish, and the world's rabbinic leaders choose to ignore these halachic violations while burying their heads in the sand. As anyone who is a regular viewer of the channel knows, I am fond of quoting the Gemara in Shabbos 139a, which states that tragedies around the world are happening on the account of compromised behavior of our leaders. While Hashem has sent us many wake-up calls in the past years, our leaders have still chosen to ignore this Gemara in Tracte Chabas. So now it has come to the point that we have a war breaking out in Ukraine with all of the horrendous resultant effects on human life and other suffering that it entails. And worst of all is that nobody knows exactly where all of this will end. Our Chachamim and Masechet Ovis Chapter 5, Mishnah 11, state, and I quote, The sword comes to the world for the procrastination of justice, the corruption of justice, and because of those who misinterpret the Torah. Sword here is another term for war. So again, the lesson we receive from the Mishnah is that the absence of peace in the world is tied to the absence of honest jurisprudence.
It means that a lot of suffering could have been avoided if only our wayward judges would have finally started to issue honest rulings. But alas, instead of acting as the guardians of the Torah and the Jewish pedigree, the Rabbanut in Israel, as well as other Bezdins worldwide, have sold Judaism and its precepts down the river by stomping on the rules of divorce and many other Torah disciplines. Now, as many of you know, we Jews conclude our prayers every day with the blessing of Shalom, of peace. Without peace, we have neither spiritual nor physical life on this earth. It is my fervent hope that our true and ethical leaders will muster the courage to resist these evil and corrupted rabbinic judges that bring war and suffering to the world as delineated by our sages in Pirkei Ovis. In that merit that we demonstrate to the Almighty our complete devotion to His Torah and mitzvahs, that we will emir to Hashem, marry true shalom, peace, and the Mashiach very soon without any suffering. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.